Hello movie barfs and welcome back to the channel. If I had to pick which Gotham City was the most dangerous to live in, it would most definitely be Tim Burton's version in 1989's Batman. You could die there with a grin on your face right in your home just from using household products. Of all the live versions of the Joker, Jack Nicholson's version is the one you do not want to be around with. He's the most deranged and homicidal, and he has the highest kill count among all the live action Jokers so far. But things didn't need to escalate to the point they did in the movie, where possibly Hundreds died at the end when he dispersed his Smilex gas during the city's anniversary celebration. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the mistakes that some of the characters made and more importantly, how they could have prevented or stopped the Joker's reign of terror in Gotham. Let's get started. Well, to start off, the Joker in Burton's Batman wasn't an unknown identity. He was second in command in Gotham's mob, led by their head, Carl Grissom. Naughty Jack has been having an affair with Grissom's woman, and this causes Grissom to turn against against him, setting him up to be killed by corrupt police officers in a raid at Axis Chemicals. This then leads to the series of events where poor Jack gets dropped into a vat of chemicals and becomes more insane after he gets permanently disfigured like a clown. But here's the thing, if Grissom's intent was to kill Jack, as we clearly see in Eckhart's instruction to the officers, surely there would be a whole lot of easier ways to do it. I get setting him up at Axis Chemicals if you want him arrested, but since Grissom wants him dead, surely he could have found some other way to get rid of him that would be just as inconspicuous. With Gotham being such a crime-ridden place and with the level of police corruption, that would have been no problem at all. Heck, Grissom could have just offed him in his own office in typical mob fashion, which would save not only himself, but the lives of hundreds of innocent civilians. Anyway, so Jack realizes he's been set up in Axis Chemicals and he's running from the cops. Batman arrives on the scene and after beating up a few criminals, he has Jack dead to rights. But he has to let Jack go as Bob was holding Commissioner Gordon hostage. After he releases him, Jack picks up his gun and tries to shoot him, but Batman has done his classic disappearing trick. Jack then decides to shoot Eckhart for his betrayal, and this right here is a wasted opportunity that Batman didn't take to stop him. There was at least a good 15 seconds from the time Batman vanished to the moment when Jack shot Eckhart, which would have given Batman plenty of time to easily sneak an attack in. Even after all that time, after Eckhart is shot, Batman is just revealed to be standing passively at the side, when he could have done something to stop Jack. Batman's theatrics clearly proved to be a detrimental mistake here, and after deflecting his gunshot causing it to ricochet back onto Jack's face, which by the way is what caused him to have that permanent grin later, Jack falls over the ledge and he's hanging above the vat of chemicals. Batman has a hold on Jack, but for some reason, he appears to purposely let him go and drops him into the chemicals. Maybe he thought, screw it, this guy isn't worth it or something, but it sure looks like he did it on purpose. I mean, he could have extended his other hand to help pull him up, but he didn't. Or he could have used his grapple gun to hand Jack from the ledge as we saw him do with another thug in the factory earlier. But nope, Batman's decision to let Jack fall into the chemicals proves to be his biggest failure, creating his arch nemesis who would go on to terrorize his city. And well, let's step back even further. Batman's involvement at Ace Chemicals was completely unnecessary. Jack was cornered and had nowhere to run, and like Commissioner Gordon said, they had him. Even Batman had some difficulty escaping, and had to grapple himself upwards to shake off the cops. Someone as slow and untrained as Jack would have found no way to escape. Maybe Commissioner Gordon would have been a casualty if Batman hadn't been around, but it's a smaller price to pay compared to the absolute mayhem Jack would later go on to cause as the Joker. And after Jack fell into the chemicals, the police still could have found him and apprehended him if they actually bothered to look. They would have known that the fall wouldn't have killed him and he had to turn up somewhere. If they would have cordoned off the factory's waste outlets, they could have still captured Jack alive. After Jack realizes his disfigurement in the world's shadiest clinic, he identifies himself as the Joker and pays a visit to his old boss Grissom to kill him for selling him out. At this point, Grissom should have known he was done for and could have just tried spinning around and shooting the Joker anyway. Maybe he might have been able to land off a lucky shot. Joker then calls a meeting with the rest of the mob family to let them know he's in charge. One of the members, Tony, doesn't wish to comply and Jack gives him an electrocuting handshake. It might not have seemed obvious at the moment, but Tony could have stopped Jack by just grabbing him, thus including him in the circuit of the current and causing him to be electrocuted as well. 
At the very least, Jack would have had to let go and Tony might have gotten a more dignified death than getting a little hot under the collar. Joker then begins his reign of terror by poisoning Gotham's household products at the source, causing civilians to die from using everyday items like shampoo and hairspray. If you were a civilian there, it would be in your best interest to avoid all soap or cosmetics just to be safe. But here's the thing, Joker conducts his operations at Axis Chemicals, the exact same place where he fell into the chemicals earlier. Since Bruce Wayne has realized that Jack Napier is still alive, wouldn't the poisoning of Gotham's products at least pique his interest to revisit the same site where Napier was last seen. He could have uncovered Joker's base of operations and bombed it much earlier, saving the lives of many civilians and perhaps might even catch the Joker off guard. Or at the very least, tip off the police anonymously so that they can crack down on his operations. And speaking of which, if the police had done some digging, if they had started checking out all the chemical factories in Gotham, they would have run into Ace Chemicals eventually and put a stop to the spread of the poison. Batman, knowing Joker's secret identity as Jack Napier, also represents another wasted opportunity. Joker appears to be still staying at the same residence as he was before the disfigurement, so Batman would know exactly where to find him with a little bit of digging. Or again, he could tip the police off anonymously. Either way, Joker's reign could have ended much earlier since he's pretty much open for Batman or the police to apprehend. Later on in the film, Joker sets up Vicky Vale for a date at the museum, as he has a crush on her of sorts, and sends her a gas mask before he releases his Smilex gas into the area. When the gas is released, the other visitors start to collapse while Vicky remains safe. But the thing that's off is that she just sits there the whole time. The whole time! Even while Joker and his goons were dancing to Prince, she just waited there like a sitting duck. It's reasonable that she might be paralyzed by fear when the gas was first released and people were collapsing, but once the smoke clears, it should be her natural instinct to run and get as far away as possible and perhaps call the police too while she's at it. That would have at least hindered Joker's plans to some degree. But never mind, she just waits there, and after getting creeped out by Joker's advances, she douses a pitcher of water on his face. Side note, some of you folks in my video on why Jack Nicholson's Joker is the scariest incorrectly state in the comments that this version of the Joker had to wear white makeup for his clownish appearance. This scene here, a pretty creepy one I might add, and this portion here clearly shows that it's beige makeup he wears over his naturally white skin, and not the other way around, despite what he claims in his TV broadcast at the end. Batman swoops in to save Vicky and has Joker at point blank range. Keaton's version of Batman is not averse to killing, but at this point he's more concerned about getting Vicky to safety. But if he wanted to, he could have just off Joker there by firing his grapple gun right at him. Fast forward to the climax of the film. Joker has hijacked the mayor's broadcast and tells Gotham that he will be at City Hall at midnight to dump 20 million in cash to the public. This is where it gets a bit odd. Joker already appeared on television earlier and publicly claims credit for the tainting of Gotham's household chemicals, causing the unpredictable deaths. Would anyone in their right mind actually think it's a good idea to still be around this maniac even though he's giving out free cash? And here's the thing, by telling everyone exactly where he will be at a specific time, the police, or Batman in fact, would have been well able to stop him before he started his balloon parade. But well, Joker gets away with his second Prince dance along and the police do nothing probably because of the crowd. But it's reasonable to suggest that they could have sniped him from one of the windows and taken him out without harming any civilians. Batman disposes of the balloons with the Batwing and upon re-entry into Gotham, he now decides that it's time to kill the Joker and proceeds to unleash the full arsenal of the Batwing on him. Till this day, I don't get how all of Batman's weapons miss the Joker, and if any of you have any insight, do share in the comments below. Are Batman's weapons that unreliable, or was there something else at play? With dual machine guns firing at such a high rate, it's a bit of a stretch that not even one bullet out of the hundreds manages to hit Joker, as he's standing still there like a motionless target. And if flying down in a straight line causes Batman to miss his shots, then all he would have to do is to alter his angle of descent a bit. You know, just shift the Batwing around a bit to get a wider arc of fire. Who knows, some of his shots may connect after that and that would be the end of the Joker as we know it. Eventually, at the top of the cathedral, Batman attaches a gargoyle to Joker's leg as he's climbing up into his helicopter, causing him to struggle under all the weight. A viewer gave this interesting observation that you could see the gargoyle as symbolic of a creature of sorts, dragging the Joker down into the underworld right before his death. 
Joker dies, but his body is surprisingly intact after the height from which he fell. But even in death, he still haunts us with that creepy laughter bag in his suit. Well, that's it folks. Those are the ways Jack Nicholson's Joker and his reign of terror could have been stopped multiple times before the crap hit the fan with his mass poisoning at the anniversary. So what did you think folks? Did we miss out on anything? Was there anything else the characters could have done differently to stop the Joker? Let us know below in the comments. If you'd like to see more videos like these, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.